So by the end of this video, you'll have full understanding of how AI detectors work. So what exact elements of our writing these AI detectors pay attention to. So if you've been using ChatGPT or some other AI tool to support your writing or to write some paragraphs for you, now you don't want to be flagged for uh, AI generated content, you want to know exactly how to redo these paragraphs. And let's be honest, you don't want to be using these AI humanizer tools because they are completely useless. They will uh, heavily affect the quality of your writing. So you have to know how to work on this yourself and how to restructure. And then I'll show you an example of AI generated paragraph and I'll work on it and try to read it so that it doesn't get flagged for AI generated content. So first let's quickly go through uh, the different factors or different elements of your writing that uh, AI detectors uh, pay attention to. So it's not just about the words as some people think. It's not just about these uh, favorite words that AI uses. It's about so much more than that. So the first metric, and these two are the most commonly cited statistical metrics, uh, are text perplexity and burstiness. So basically perplexity is a measure of how surprised a language model is by our text. Uh, because human writing tends to have a higher perplexity because it's more unpredictable. AI content, on the other hand, is more statistically uh, expected and therefore has less perplexity. And burstiness is uh, pretty related, it's, it's uh, about variation. So, so human writing, again, it, it has variation in sentence length, structure, word choice, whilst uh, AI tends to be just uniform. Then sentence structure and grammar, so uh, consistency and polish, these are things that are taken into account uh, because AI generated text is usually grammatically flawless uh, and stylistically consistent. Quite often it's just too consistent. Then AI does have its favorite words, like I said, it may repeat words, phrases or sentences, and it just does it uh, too often. And another one is very subtle, it's about transitions. It's good to use these expressions, but AI uh, likes to overuse these expressions, these connectors like therefore, however, in conclusion, again, this overlaps with the, the favorite expressions that it just likes to, uh, to overuse. Vocabulary and word choice, very related again, overlaps. It's about favorite expressions. At the same time, it's using safe uh, vocabulary, so very rarely does it use any colloquial words. Um, for our academic writing, is not a big problem. So here I just chose whatever is relevant for academic writing, of course. And then when we talk about fixing things, again, I'm talking about fixing for academic writing because you can see some guidelines online for how to fix, how to humanize content. And we'll talk about things like adding humor, personal anecdotes, making it inconsistent and open-ended. But it's usually talking about our everyday language. So maybe if you're writing a blog, here we're talking about academic text, of course. So, so the bar is much higher. But about the vocabulary and AI, it's learned to predict what comes next. So again, it takes this most predictable path essentially when writing our content for us and then later gets our content gets flagged by AI for the exact same reason. In terms of coherence and depth of AI writing, again, it's not always easy to spot, but it does focus on the surface uh, level, meaning quite often lacks originality argumentation. And then it uses the statements that do seem fine for academic writing, but again, it, it really depends on the context of where they appear. So they appear meaningful, but they are not always meaningful. So like, it's important to consider all perspectives. It can be a meaningful statement, or it can be just there for the sake of it. And this often, the latter often happens in AI writing. And then finally, it, it may compare our writing to know other known outputs. So there are language corpora, and uh, both for AI language and human language. And some of these detectors, they make use of this uh, huge database of language of any possible use of language that there exists. So, so again, that's another factor. So you can see that there are more factors than just the words that AI uses. This is what people tend to think. So they think that they will just replace these favorite expressions of uh, AI or ChatGPT and the text will become undetectable. And then they are surprised that it's still uh, very much detectable. So it's, it, there is so much more. It's mainly, if I had to pick one, it is really about the structure. You have to introduce variation in the structure. We'll go through it. So now I'll go through some ideas for how to humanize that text. And I'll, I'll continue to talk about some issues with AI uh, created or generated content. And then I'll show you an example of AI generated content, how it's flagged 100% AI generated, and then how I'll work on some 
uh, some changes and uh, to make it less or to make it undetectable. So the first way to fix AI uh, generated content and humanize it is to introduce intellectual hesitation, which is a normal thing that is expected in academic writing anyway. So basically, AI likes to write in absolutes in uh, present information as factual statements as something that's just sure. And scholars, on the other hand, or humans for that matter, they hedge, they suggest, they suspect. So, so it's about using this kind of language, which again, in any case, is something that you have to do in academic writing. So you don't like, you don't want to be presenting things as facts. Instead, you're talking about uh, there uh, being a possibility that something happens. It appears that something is true. Uh, it is suspected, it is believed, it is likely. So this kind of thing, this is something that AI rarely, rarely does. So it will say social media has an impact on uh, whatever, self-esteem. And it's not something that we like to do, like I said, in any case, but especially if we want to avoid being flagged for AI content. Another one is to add subtle critique. Critique, 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 critique. Jesus, add subtle crit critique. Critique, critique, uh, critique, pronunciation, critique, pronunciation, critique. Another one is to add subtle critique. And I'm laughing because I just spent a little bit of time trying to <laughs> trying to learn how to pronounce the word, the word critique. This is again pretty obvious because in academic writing you do have to present different uh, points of view anyway. So AI will present things, uh, it will just factually present a statement that somebody does or says something, whereas as a human we want to point out maybe some inconsistencies or point to some other points of view. It's not something you can do to every sentence, so we'll go through every sentence in a second, but it's something that generally should be present. And now this one is very important. This one will be uh, important at the level of sentences and, and just has to be uh, present everywhere as we uh, make our way through this AI-generated context. So to introduce a uh, variation in sentence opening, uh, openings and syntax. So AI will often start sentences in the exact same way, even if we don't initially notice it. So things like this study, this shows, it is important. So uh, there are these uh, little repetitions. And again, they are very, uh, to our basically human eye, it's, it's very difficult to spot, but they are almost exact. Uh, in their structure, in their length, which then adds to the rest of the structure of the sentence. And overall, the whole sentence tends to have the same kind of number of beats, same number of, sometimes even similar number of syllables, words, length, and so on and so forth. So by adding this, this variation and how we introduce our sentences, we are breaking down that structure already. So we can use introductory clauses, dependent clauses, inverted structures, rather than just uh, repeating that same exact structure of a sentence. So things like, although widely cited, this study has received little empirical follow-up. It's already a little bit different. Or central to this argument is the notion of, so just uh, reversing the order. You'll see when I go through individual uh, sentences, what I mean, just reversing the order and introducing this variation. So now you know what factors are being considered by AI detectors. Now you know roughly in theory how to humanize the content. And now let's have a look at how we can actually humanize the content. So let's have a look at exact sen uh, ex example sentence generated by AI and see how we can change it and humanize it so it's undetectable. But before I continue, have a look at my website and the range of services that I offer that are relevant to any aspect and any stage of your study. They include uh, Zoom tutorials, data analysis services, or writing support. Okay, so what we can see here now is a paragraph that I asked ChatGPT to produce. If the sound quality is slightly different, it's just because I switched computers. Hopefully it's not too bad, but this is the paragraph that we're going to, to work on. Now, just to show you that it, it is being flagged for AI-generated content, let me paste it here to this free tool, Detect AI. Uh, sure enough, 100% generated by AI. So we'll have to work on it a little bit. So I pasted it to Microsoft Word and let uh, let us begin the work. So the first sentence, self-esteem plays a critical role in shaping a communicative experience of migrants using English second language. Firstly, if I liked it, I could just keep it. Uh, as I said, what is really more important are not individual sentences, it's just how they are glued together. So uh, occasionally, if I really like something, I can change it uh, as long as I make sure that the following sentence does not follow the exact same pattern, like I said, the number of beats and, and uh, generally the length. So. Uh, here I will uh, tone it down a little bit. So I'll say, as I said, uh, I don't like and nobody does in academia to present things as factual statements. So rather than it plays a critical role, I'll say it 
uh, can play a critical role. And at the end, we'll just add a reference because, again, it's something that normally would be expected to be referenced anyway. So let me just say it's some somebody called Jackson 2020. And this already kind of breaks down the sentence a little bit. And the second sentence is high self-esteem fosters confidence, which is essential for engaging in conversations, expressing needs and participating in social, educational, and professional context. I don't like some of it. For example, participating in social, educational, professional context seems a little bit vague. So, so this is another, in my opinion, a little bit of a giveaway. Not so much, but it's just something I don't like in any case. Uh, it's talking about uh, confidence, which is essential for engaging in conversations. So we're talking about conversations, which is fine. So why then talk about social and participating in social education and professional context? So I feel like we just have to simplify it. So that's generally my approach. I have to understand the sentence first and then think of how I can possibly uh, talk about it in a way that I just like more than what it says now. And usually this includes deleting some things that are just not needed. Remember what I told you about surface level meaning and things it says that kind of make sense, but then they don't really. So I'll start by, again, toning it down. I'll say it um, has also been shown that high self-esteem can increase. So, so again, toning down can increase uh, confidence, which is a chance of for engaging, blah, 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 and then participating. Th there is just too much information. Can increase confidence, and as a result, um, their willingness or migrants, doesn't matter, their willingness to, to participate in various conversational contexts, exchanges, it doesn't matter, it's not perfect either, but basically the, the, the message is the same, hopefully you agree. There's too much about a conversation and expressing needs. It's just about confidence and being willing to participate, to engage in conversation. So now let's continue. Again, it's not a bad word and I use it conversely. I just feel like here I'll include some variation again to to influence the overall length even of the sentence. So I'll say low self-esteem. I'll also uh, reverse the order as I said earlier. So low, low self-esteem on the other hand. And there is a lot to unpack here again. So it may hinder communication by, by increasing anxiety, fear of judgment and reluctance to speak which doesn't make that much sense because again, it's uh, or maybe it makes some sense anyway, ultimately affecting language development and social integration, which is again, a little bit about communication. It's just about simplifying. I want to simplify this. Uh, so low self esteem, on the other hand, may affect social integration, mainly due to increased anxiety and fear of judgment. It doesn't have to be this way. Maybe I could keep uh, some elements, but I feel like, again, it communicates the point that it was trying to make. Migrants who perceive their English skills as inadequate may, may internalize feelings of inferiority, reinforcing inclusion and marginali marginalization, whatever. Um, let's see what we can do here. The sentence is good. I like it. I would normally like it. But then remember, and this is probably the, what will cause us problem. There is another sentence that's, again, very similar in length and structure, even though it's a different sentence. So then it says, therefore, supporting self-esteem is vital, not only for linguistic competence, but also for promoting migrants' overall well-being and inclusion. Almost every time it lists things, it's almost every time it's two things uh, divided by and. So it's just too similar. Uh, the previous sentence was also about something and something, and then there's this almost exact same structure. So... I want to to avoid that. I want to, again, get the overall sense of what it means and combine it maybe into now something that's a little bit longer, maybe slightly uh, clumsy even. So uh, as, and also rever reverse the order. So as low self-perceived or self-assessed, we could say, English skills skills are believed, remember about toning down, uh, to lead to inferiority complex, to lead to inferiority complex and exclusion. Marginalization is, I mean, arguably slightly different, but 
for now it will do an exclusion so as it's believed to lead to these these things it's vital it says we have to do it. so it is crucial to support self esteem building to promote the migrants linguistic and social inclusion uh, because that's what it says promoting their well-being and inclusion and the language linguistic competence so this should do hopefully it's not too uh, short because i think it has to be 80 words it should, yeah that's enough uh, for this uh, for this tool that we were using so now let's go to the tool delete this zero percent it did take <laughs> a little bit of of work and i cut out some sequences when i was thinking uh, but that's basically what happens that's what happens so i think my main message to you would be read it try to understand what it says and try to say it in your own words in fact what i would normally do i would probably have it as separate paragraphs I try to literally forget what it said exactly. I just want to remember the meaning and then say it in my own words. But it's very hard because you're influenced by what you just saw. And it does have good sentences, but basically that's what happens. I hope that you enjoyed the video and learned something new today. If you did, please like the video. This really helps YouTube position my video and lets YouTube know that it's a good video with quality content. Uh, feel free to ask me questions in the comments. Feel free to share it with others and consider subscribing if you haven't already.